Building on the last video, I'd like to show how we get from the sum of squared residuals to the standard error, the regression, the SER, which is a key measure of goodness of fit of the regression line, and then also show how the standard error regression is analogous to the sample standard deviation of the dependent variable. <laughs> My previous video illustrated the most common linear regression, which is called OLS, standing for Ordinary Least Squares. And I showed that the approach that we take in the OLS regression is to find the line that minimizes this value here, the SSR, standing for sum of squared residuals. And it means exactly what it sounds like. And now I'd just like to take the I'll go from the SSR in two short calculations to get the standard error of the regression, which is one of the primary measures of the goodness of fit of the line. So we use this value a lot. So in this example, I have 10 pairs of observations. They're all hypothetical. And it's also, by the way, a very small sample where I thought for X values here, that's the X axis, and that's going to be my independent value. That's going to represent years of education. And my y values here, that's on my y axis, that will represent an hourly wage. So that's going to be the dependent value. Under hypothesis, we're just going to hypothesize that the more years of education somebody has, the higher their hourly wage would be. And so we're regressing the dependent on the independent. We're regressing hourly wage against years of education. And so in this example, I also get, I also have Excel automatically generate for me the intercept. You can see here with the intercept function and the slope function with those values. And how did Excel get me those values? It minimized the sum of squared residuals. So for example, where X is nine years of education, the predicted value according to my line, right? That is just here at X equals nine, we are, the line is predicting for me an hourly wage of $15.78, but my actual value is $12, my actual Y value. So my residual is the vertical distance between the regression line and the actual observed Y. In this case, the residual is negative 378. And then my final column simply squares the residual. So it's always going to be positive values. So we have here the residual, which is the difference between the actual and predicted Y. We have here the squared residual, and then we sum those to get the appropriately named sum of squared residuals. And these are the coefficients that minimize this value. So any other line we try to draw through this scatter plot will produce a higher value. So this is our best fit line, at least under this algorithm or approach to the line. So we have the sum of squared residuals. And now we're going to get the standard error of the regression. And it's a pretty straightforward function. The standard error of the regression, we're going to take in the numerator, the sum of squared residuals and we're going to divide in the denominator by the degrees of freedom. And I'm going to represent the degrees of freedom as n minus k. And k is the number of coefficients that are estimated in the regression. So here's my regression line. And the idea is that we are estimating two coefficients, a slope coefficient and one intercept. So a key tip here is we want to include the intercept in the number of coefficients that are being regressed. So in a univariate regression, k will always equal 2 because we have a single slope plus the intercept. So k will always equal the number of independent variables in a multivariate regression plus the slope. In this case, then, k equals 2. And so our n minus k in this case is 10 observations minus um, 10 observations minus 
two coefficients that are estimated equals eight degrees of freedom. And in our numerator, you can see here the sum of the squared residuals is 103.81. Okay, so we've taken the SSR, sum of squared residuals, we divided by the degrees of freedom, which is sample size minus number of coefficients estimated, because estimating the coefficients consumes degrees of freedom. And that ratio gives us what is analogous to a variance. And over here, I've calculated simply the variance of the y values and then the standard deviation of the y values. So that's just, these are simple univariate statistics on the y values. We take the SSR and divide by the degrees of freedom. We're analogous to, analogous to, the sample variance of the actual y values that have nothing to do with x. All we then need to do is take the square root of this ratio. So I'm going to take that square root on here and here. And so that symbolically here, or notationally, we have the standard error of the regression. And then in terms of values, it's given right here. And I happen to have $3.60, and deliberately I did notate this with the dollar sign because we are in units of the dependent variable, in this case, the hourly wage. So my standard error of the regression is the square root of the fraction that has in the numerator the sum of squared residuals divided by, in the denominator, the degrees of freedom, which itself is n minus k, the number of coefficients that we're estimating. And what I wanted to highlight, because the standard of the regression, it's never, it's oftentimes at first, when we first see it, doesn't seem into intuitive, but I want to highlight two things about it. The first is that, remember I said, this ratio inside the square root is analogous to the variance of the y variable, well, the standard error of the regression is analogous to the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation of the actual y observations by themselves. So in this case, the sample standard deviation of the y values by themselves is $5.08. What does that mean? Well, it's a measure of dispersion, our standard deviation or volatility around the mean value of y. The standard error of regression is very much like that. The key difference being that it's a measure of dispersion of the actual observations, but not around the mean y value, but simply around the regression line. So if we th think about this, these scatter plot here, the standard error of the regression is telling us about the dispersion. If we just sort of imagine something like a bell curve here, we're getting dispersion of these observations around the regression line. So you can, and really it is a standard deviation, so it's analogous to this dispersion of the univariate actual y, but in this case, an actual y has nothing to do with the x. This standard error of the regression has everything to do with the regression. So it's analogous to. That's my first insight I wanted to share about the standard error of the regression. And then the second is that in the line est set of functions, oftentimes in a regression, line est generates for us the set of statistics for the regression. And you'll notice that I actually have everything I need here, including the standard error of the regression. First of all, notice the standard, the sum of squared residuals of 10381 is a value directly given to me in the line S table. It's right here. That's the sum of squared residuals. Also notice I am given the degrees of freedom in the table. You wouldn't know it maybe without a lookup, but it's eight where my degrees of freedom is 10 paired observations minus one, two coefficients that are estimated. 10 minus two equals eight. And then you'll also notice if I take the 
sum of squared residuals of 103.81 divide by the degrees of freedom, which is 8, I get $3.60, which in fact is my standard error of the regression. So it's so common that it's included directly in the line S table. Here it is right here. Of course, it doesn't have the dollar sign, but I do include the dollar sign because just again, just like $5.08 is the sample standard deviation, the measure of univariate dispersion of simply the hourly wage, my standard error of the regression is also a measure of dispersion, but around the regression line. And so its units are the same units as the dependent variable, in this case, the hourly wage. So that's the standard of the regression, one of the key measures of goodness of fit. Thank you.